Good evening. My name is Mohamed El Komi. I'm a professor of dermatology at the Faculty of Medicine, Cairo University, Egypt. And it's my pleasure to talk to you today about nail psoriasis. Infection of the nails in psoriasis is quite common. 60% of patients will have their nail affected. It has a lifetime incidence of 80 to 90% and it presents as an isolated disorder in 5% of patients. We have noticed that nail psoriasis is more common in older patients than younger ones. And nail psoriasis is not just a cosmetic problem because it interferes with work in more than 58% of those who have their nails affected with psoriasis. And it's also more than half of these uh, experience pain in their nails, 52% uh, to be exact. Now we will see a couple of cases with nail psoriasis. The first case was a 63-year-old male patient with a five-year history of nail dystrophy of his left hand, and he had no other cutaneous lesions. He received several antifungals, but with no improvement. If we have a closer look, we will find that the patient has onycholysis, pitting, splinter hemorrhage, and subungal hyperkeratosis, and some oil spots on his finger nails. The patient was prescribed topical betamisazone with calcipitriol, tacrolimus under occlusion, and after three months, this is the picture of the patient, and he showed market improvement with these topical medications. Here we can see the before and after photos of his affected nails. We will see that the pitting improved after treatment as well as the oil spots which almost disappeared. His subungal hyperkeratosis as well had markedly improved However, the onycholysis did not improve as much as the subangal hyperkeratosis, which was strange because both these signs are nail bed originated. And if one of the nail signs uh, improved, why did the other one not improve? When we reviewed the patient, he admitted that he always tries to clean beneath his nail plate using a sharp object. And we believe that this is why this patient did not improve regarding the onycholysis despite improvement of all other signs of his nail psoriasis. In the second case, we will have a look at what the dermoscope can show us. Dermoscopy is very helpful in differentiating nail psoriasis from other nail diseases. In this picture, we can see clearly the splinter hemorrhage, the onycholysis with its smooth border, unlike that of onychomycosis, which shows spikes, and that of traumatic onycholysis, where the border of the onycholytic area is more or less sloppy. Also characteristically, we see erythema at the proximal end of the onycholysis, and this is characteristic of psoriasis, and of course, the pitting is more evident using the dermoscope. Here, we see an emerging scale coming out of the proximal nail fold, as well as vascular puncta of the uh, nail fold, and they are both uh, suggestive of psoriasis. And finally, the subangle hyperkeratosis, on the left side, we see a complete subangle plug of hyperkeratosis, which is seen in psoriasis. But on the right side, the subangle hyperkeratosis looks as if it's broken or it has some holes in it, which has been termed dilapidated brick wall appearance. And this is common among patients with onychomycosis. So dermoscopy may help us in identifying nail psoriasis differentiating it from other nail disorders. In the third case, 
this young man started developing postular lesions on the distal parts of his fingers, followed by postural lesions elsewhere on the body, making this a case of acrodermatitis continua of Halipo with generalized postular psoriasis, uh, or what we can call mixed type of postular psoriasis according to the ERASPO. Acrodermatitis continua of Halipo is a pers persistent scarring disease, and with its predilection for the nail apparatus, the chances of complications are quite high. We started this patient on a high dose of cyclosporin, 5 mg per kilogram per day, and after three weeks, you can see in the bottom uh, picture that uh, most of his pustules have cured, but unfortunately, also, he lost several of his nails, uh, leading to anonychia. This anonychia is often irreversible. Acrodermatitis continua of Halepo is an aggressive disease for the nail, and it should be treated as such. It should be treated aggressively and with rapidly potent acting drug to prevent such complications. Our fourth case, this 25-year-old housewife had a three-year history of nail dystrophy for which she received several antifungals but with no improvement. The patient reported that uh, her condition was painless and if we take a closer look, we'll find that the patient has onycholysis, subangle hyperkeratosis, longitudinal ridging, and large bit proximal to the nail uh, fold, proximal nail fold. And we have also some edema in the nail, uh, proximal nail fold, uh, which may be attributed for uh, being a housewife, maybe uh, leading to this uh, chronic paronychia. Her paronychia was localized to the affected nails only. It was painless. The patient did not report any uh, type of pain or oozing from these uh, swollen uh, areas. So we asked for an X-ray and uh, this showed arthritic changes consistent with our clinical picture of the nail this was a case of nail psoriasis with arthritis. So after consultation with our uh, colleagues in rheumatology, we started the patient on mesotrexate, 15 milligram per week. And after six weeks, we can see that her nails started to get better. And even uh, the swollen uh, uh, nail folds and swollen fingers are also starting to improve. In conclusion, please remember to discuss nail grooming habits with your patients and try to use the dermoscope because it's often helpful in difficult cases when we try to differentiate between uh, nail diseases. Uh, ask for imaging studies when clinically appropriate. And finally, please remember to treat postular psoriasis aggressively to avoid complications like anonychia. Thank you very much.